Hello everyone and welcome to the ninth episode of Hip Hip Barbanit Stories. My name is Linda and I'm talking to you from Reykjavik, Iceland. Uh, you can find me on Ravelry as Hip Hip Barbanit, on Instagram as Barbanit, and then I have an email, barbanit at gmail.com, if you want to get in touch with me about anything and nothing. Or you can just comment below. Um, if you like my episodes, I would really appreciate a thumbs up and a su- subscription from you, um, as this helps other people find the podcast. Okay, let's jump right into it. Uh, I'm going to show you what I'm wearing today, because I don't have any finished objects. I have a, I have a few uh, whips, but... I didn't manage manage to finish anything this week because it was absolutely crazy. Um, but what I'm wearing today is my Enchanted Mesa dress that I made for uh, West Knits, Best Knits 2. Uh, I love this dress a lot. I can stand up and show it to you better. Let's see. Okay. I'm just gonna lift it up. It has this brioche on the bottom. And yeah. I love it very much. Um, This was like uh, the prototype of the dress. I made it um, with Steven. He sent me tips and pointers and I just knitted basically the uh, pattern for the sweater but did some modifications for it to be like a fitted garment, not an oversized one. So I made the whole thing out of um, fingering weight yarn uh, and it was a really fun thing to make. Um, (laughs) I found my notes while I was knitting, so this is like the yarn yarns that I used and my notes and my notes and I think there's one more page of notes yeah so I was like knitting and writing down all the notes and then we I sent them all to Stephen and he made it into an actual pattern (laughs) <laughs> it was just like then I did this and I think I did this and you figure out the rest um, the yarns that I used uh, the first color here um, on the yoke uh, is parchment in singles by La Bien-Ami. and the rest of the colors in the dress uh, for the main colors uh, are Hatchock Fiber Potlucks So, uh, there were like one, two, three, yeah, four potlucks. And then I threw in just a little bit of uh, salty tails for the bottom, like in the brioche section. Um, I used uh, Hedgehog Fibers Pollen here and in the brioche section on the bottom. I used Hedgehog Fibers uh, Secret, which is uh, this pink one. Um, yeah, I used a lot of different um, Hatsock uh, colors. Uh, this green one here is from um, I think it's a Madeleine Tosh color. I don't, I don't, I didn't have the label or anything, so I'm not really sure. The blue is also a, a Hatsock color. And the grey here for the neckline. And here, this is graphite by by Hedgehog as well. So yeah, this is my Enchanted Mesa dress. I love this dress. It's really, really nice, especially for Icelandic weather. (laughs) As it's warm and snuggly and not too warm. Like on days like today, I could wear this outside and just throw over like a shawl or a light... A garment on top and I would be perfectly fine so okay um, like I said I don't have any finishes this week I was 
going to finish uh, a sock pair. I'm almost there, but I didn't quite manage to finish it. So I'm going to go over what I've been working on this week. Um, the project that has been getting uh, most of my attention is living in my field bag. Um, it's all the angles that I showed you last week. I'm working on a, a bigger version of the design for Steven. Um, it's all bundled up on my needle, so I can't really spread it out to show you guys. Um, I'm in the middle of a row also, like always, I'm always on the, in the middle of a row, but mm -mm -mm. let me see if I can spread it out just a little bit. So yeah, it's going to be a huge one. I think it's beautiful. Um, I'm using Garden Stories in their single space in two colors. It's really plain but simple and I think it's quite elegant. Um, I've used just... Um, this is my second skein of this white color. I've used like one full skein and about a third of this one. And I just cranked into my second skein of the dark one. So I think it's going to be like a skein and a half of each color when I'm done. So yeah, this has been getting most of my attention. I finished this huge white section and now I'm working on a <laughs> this other black section over here. So, and then I need to do the huge bind off as well. So I think it's going to be a few days before I finish. I hope that I can finish this black section today. Uh, and maybe start the cast off. So I will definitely finish it this week and have this finished object to show you next week. Uh, the other project that I've that uh, that has been getting most of my attention are my socks, my green socks that I started in Edinburgh. Uh, one sock is done, completely done. I'm absolutely in love with it. It this yarn knits up so nicely. I threw <laughs> when I finished this sock, I threw it at my husband and I was like, "Look, look at the sock." And he was like, "Did you knit this? It looks like it's made by a machine or something. The stitch definition is perfect." And they're quite um not thick, but like dense. They hug my feet when I wear them and that's the way I like my socks. I don't like socks that are too loose because I have really uh, sp I have small legs and they're also like thin. <laughs> um, they're kind of skinny I guess um, so I have a lot of trouble uh, shopping for shoes because a lot of shoes are way too wide for me so my feet kind of dangle in them so I like my socks to like hug my feet because otherwise they just start slipping down and my feet just dangle in the socks and I don't like that at all. But these are just absolutely perfect. I cast it on 60 stitches uh, on two millimeter needles. Um, I did 20 rows of ribbing and then I did about I think it's like almost 50, 48 or something for the leg. Um, I did a heel flap and a turned heel in this green color. And I also used the same for the toes. So I finished this one. I did the toe. I was like almost up to the toe. So I finished the toe and I started the other sock. I only started it uh, yesterday. No, no, Friday evening. I, I cast it on it, did a few rows of, of the ribbing. And they're gonna match. I was just gonna wing it and just knit from wherever I was in the in the skein. But turned out, yeah, 
they're gonna match so I started the heel flap last night I only have one row done so these should be finished soon also and the yarn that I'm using for these are twisted fiber arts this colorway is called Highland and this is just like a green um, mini that it was it was a kit that my mother-in-law bought and got me so yay socks so I'm almost there I know I didn't finish on time but oh well oh well I am gonna finish them I'm uh, I can feel my sock uh, sock knitting uh, obsession kicking in I want to knit all the socks except there's an exception to this okay uh, when I went over all my socks that needed finishing I finished two the yellow pair and then the the thicker pair for my daughter so I'm gonna finish oh excuse me I'm gonna finish these uh, green multicolored ones and then I'm gonna take these out and show you um, I also showed you this one this is way too big for me it's way too loose I, I knit it on 2.5s and that's just not I need to I need to make my socks on two millimeter needles so they fit my leg so these are way too big for me so I have a plan uh, I'm gonna I, I was thinking about just making another one and gift them to some someone but I have a new plan I am going to I have plenty of this yarn so I am going to make just a completely new pair out of this combo here this is for the cuff heel and toes and this is the main color here uh, these are both Regia. I don't have the label for this one anymore. But um, yeah, this is the Regia. The colorway is number 07306. And I'm just going to make myself a new pair of socks and frog this one. Sorry. But yeah, that's my plan. I I figured out why I have such uh, such an issue with my second sock syndrome, and it's exactly because of this. Because uh, I've been knitting my socks on two big needles. They've been way too big for me, uh, and I need to be in love with the yarn that I'm using. I am in love with these colors so if I just <clears throat> excuse me if I just knit them again on the correct needle size it's gonna be fine and I'm gonna love them so these are 2.5s they are too big so I'm gonna start them again on twos and I'm gonna uh, because I've been wanting to do a new heel because I've always done a heel flap and turned the heel and then just kept keep kept knitting. Uh, I want to learn a new heel and I, I'm going to do these with the fist lips kiss heel. So that I learn a new technique and keep it a little bit interesting. So that I will follow through with finishing this pair of socks. So learning something new and knitting socks that are going to fit me. Perfect. Okay. And then the other pair is this. This pattern is called uh, Roots by Biara from Hatchock Fibers. And I love them. They fit me perfectly. But my problem with this is I do not enjoy knitting cables I love the look of them 
I absolutely love cable, like crazy cables. I'm in awe. I just, I love them. But they are not for me. I just, I don't enjoy knitting cables. I've tried, I've done a few small cable projects and it's not for me. It's just, no, it doesn't speak to me. I just get really frustrated and no, I, I've, I've learned my lesson, lesson with cables. <laughs> they are not my cup of tea, even though I love the way they look. So I was talking about this problem I have with cables in knit group yesterday. And one of the ladies in my knit group, her name is Bippa. She has taught me a lot of, a lot about knitting in the past. She loves doing cables. And I have one sock finished and here is the yarn. This is um, hand dyed by a friend of ours, actually. Uh, it's a beautiful uh, brown with, yeah, it's like a very, like a, a few different shades of brown. And I love the color. I love the yarn. I just, I'm never going to finish the other sock. So Pippa said, bring them, bring the sock and the leftover yarn to me and I will finish the other sock for you. That's what knit friends are for. They, you know, drag you to shore when you're sinking. Yeah. So I'm going to give the sock and this yarn to Pippa. And she's going to make me the other sock. I know I'm to totally, totally, totally cheating on my knit the other sock project. But I don't care. I'm sorry. I'm going to cheat. And I'm not really ashamed about it. I am going to do something incredibly nice to Pippa. Instead of, you know in trade for her finishing my sock for me. So, um, yeah, I like patterned socks. I just don't like cables. And I have a few socks in my favorites on Rav, Ravelry that I'm gonna knit. I have a lot of beautiful sock yarn and I want a lot of handmade socks. So I just need to remember never to start knitting cabled socks again it's just it's not for me so Pippa is gonna finish this I'm gonna do something incredibly nice for her instead so I will have this pair finished at some point I told her there's no rush there's no pressure just do it at your own pace and yeah and thank you so much Pippa for being the incredible helpful, amazing knitter and friend that you are. Okay. So these are going to Pippa and yeah, out of my life until I get them finished in my greedy feet, not hands, but feet. Yeah. So that's it. I'm going to learn something new and a friend is going to rescue me because I'm I'm a mess when it comes to knitting cables. Okay. Um, I have something in mind. Um, as most of you probably know, the new uh, Pom Pom issue has been released. And I'm waiting for it to uh, come at my knit store. I asked my friend Taka to reserve a copy for me because I looked through the sneak peek photos on Ravelry and I love every single thing in that issue. I love stripes. I love all the colors. I love all the styling. I love all the designs and I'm just, yeah, I need that copy of Pom Pom in my life. Um, I have a, I have a, I have a lot of the issues, but not 
like not all of them but um this one is something that i definitely need to own so the first project um that i wanted that like jumped at me is the uh, the patterns called let me see i wrote this down because i don't remember things very well uh yutoka by lia moya it's a project back it looks amazing and it's made out of cotton and i have a i have a pretty decent cotton stash so i pulled out a few color combos the, the back comes in three different sizes I think I'm gonna start the medium size. I want I want to make the big size as well, but I think I'm gonna start with the medium size. And uh, I pulled out a few color combos that spoke to me, and I'm thinking about using. Um, maybe we'll see. We'll see what happens. And I proposed to my uh, Saturday knit group that we would make this a knit along, and I think. Almost all of them are gonna join. So we're all gonna make, you know, knit ourselves project bags. So uh, I wanted to show you some of the color combos that I picked out. Uh, this is cotton from uh, Sastrene Grene, which is like, um, if you are familiar with uh, Tiger, Tiga, the Danish brand it's like a store with a lot of different things i don't know how to explain it properly but uh, we also have sister negrena here in iceland and they carry yarn and i really like their cotton yarns it's really nice it's really affordable so ev every time i go in that store which is yeah a few times a year i pick up like random colors that i like and I throw them in a bag and I've made a lot of um, like dish rags and stuff out of this yarn and I throw it in the washing machine and it's just it's amazing I love this yarn um, so three colors I like the I like these and I'm gonna put this over here and I'm really crossing over this combo. Gray, uh, antique pink, and these this antique green. I like this combo as well. Um, and these are also Sister Negrene. Like all the cottons that I've showed you already are from them. And then I have this, the stonewashed cotton. I think it's really nice this colorway is called a uh, smoky quartz it's a gray stone wash color and I th then i thought about pairing it with these this burnt orange and this blue and i also like this combo really nice springy Oh, there's a big bee trying to get in. Okay. And also, again, two colors of the Sister Negrena cotton and then this same stonewashed cotton. This is called Yellow Jasper. Oh, wow. It's pouring down rain. It was sun like five minutes ago, but now it's raining. Okay. Um, this yellow and these two turquoise colors to go with it. So yeah, I have a few options, um, but who knows, maybe I will go out and buy new yarn. No, I'm gonna try to knit this project back from stash. And even though the pattern calls for three colors, you can definitely use more. Uh, I love it. I think it's so pretty, this project back. The design is really nice. So we're going to have a knit along in my knit group. And if you guys want to join, that would be amazing. So let's have a knit along. If you want to make this project back, 
I would love to hear about it. Um, and this is, I think the magazine is due to arrive at my knit, at my favorite knit store. Um, it's hailing. I'm sorry, the weather is really distracting these days. <laughs> um, yeah, the magazine is supposed to arrive next week, I think, or the week after. And then I'm gonna be done with uh, the all the angles shawl. And yeah, I I think I'm gonna have room in my knitting schedule to make this project back, at least start it. I think it's a super fast knit. It looks like a super fast knit. So I'm just gonna go with it. I'm gonna start the medium bag, I think, but I, I think I wanna make all the sizes at some point. Okay. Um, that's, oh, I've also been working on one other project, which is a secret project for now. Um, I can show it to you at some point, but it's a test knit that is super secret at the moment. So, um, another thing that I wanted to talk about or show you guys is two crochet projects. One of them is finished and I finished it like five years ago or something, a long time ago. It's a huge blanket that I made for my daughter. And I have it here on the floor. Here we go. It's just a ripple blanket made out of some commercial uh, wool that I got at, um, what do you call them? Whoa. I'm lost in translation again. Um, like a hardware store where you can buy tools and wood and, and screws and nails and all sorts of stuff. It's called Pico. Um, they have yarn as well. You can buy yarn there and in the supermarket and well, in a lot of different places here in Iceland. This is some Norwegian commercial wool. I don't remember the name of it. Uh, I'll look it up on Ravelry and post it here below if I find the info. So I used grey, pink, brown, it's like dark brown, it's not black, and white for this huge, it's like it's over two meters high and it's about a meter, a meter and maybe 30 white. And it covers my daughter's bed. So I made Caritas this huge blanket sometime. So yeah, about five years ago, I think. Uh, it was a lot of fun. And I like doing crochet blankets, like huge blankets. I think it's really nice. And it's brainless. You don't have to think. And it's super simple. And if you make a mistake, Ripping back is so easy in crochet. It's so easy because you always just have like one loop that you need, like your starting point is always just one loop or one stitch. So you don't have like 500 uh, stitches on your needles and have to think back and just, sometimes it's a mess when you're doing knitting. So when I do blankets, I usually do crochet blankets. And this one has been used a lot. I've also made uh, a crochet blanket for my sister and for her son. And for my older daughter, Simros, I made her a blanket as well. Um, yeah, I've made quite a few blankets, like big, big crochet blankets that use up a lot of yarn. And then when I went over all my whips, I didn't pull this one out because honestly, I just forgot about it. But I have 
quite a collection of Kampgab, which is produced by Eastex. It comes in a lot of different colors. It's sport weight and uh, it's merino, but we don't have merino here in Iceland, so it's imported, but it's dyed here and uh, sold by Eastex. So, it's a granny. Okay, I have a huge, uh, like the big blue IKEA bags that you get in IKEA. It makes a lot of noise, like this. This one is, it's not full anymore, but it has a lot of kamkat in it. So, here's one square. And I'm, I'm doing this totally at random. Um, I don't uh, pick out the color combos or anything. I just draw a color and make the first two rounds with it. And then I draw a new color and make one round and a new and a new and a new. And this is like 10 rows. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten rounds. And then a square is done. Here's one. Here's a second one. And the third one. And when I, I I make like three or four and then I join them. And like you can see, I weave in all my ends as I go along because I have found out that if I don't do that, the blanket is gonna have ends forever. And I never ever ever weave in the ends. So I make myself <laughs> weave in all the ends as I go and then after the two rounds I make one round with black and then I join as I go this is gonna be a huge blanket and then I join as I go on the second round so this is what it's looking like I have like three I think it's almost two meters wide I haven't measured it out so yeah this is another whip this is like a long-term whip um, it's nothing that I need to finish by any any deadline it's just for us to use around the house and I like it I've wanted a granny square blanket since I was a kid like a classic granny square with all the colors black uh, borders and joints and just a classic granny square blanket so I gathered up all the camp cut that I had it's great for blankets I'm not a huge fan fan of using it in like garments and stuff I have but I'm not a huge fan of it but it's it's great for blankets so I gathered up all the camp cut that I had in the house threw uh, all the colors in this project in this Ikea bag and then I just went with it um, I have a few uh, balls of this yarn uh, in a certain color combo I think it's gray uh, this um, mustardy yellow here um, and navy blue and brown that I've set aside for another blanket that I want to make at some point I haven't decided uh, the design or how it's gonna you know what it's gonna look like but at some point, I'm going to make that into a blanket as well, a crochet blanket. So yeah, this is my crochet whip.
I really like it. And I like my crochet to be um, dense, not uh, loose. So this is sport weight, but I'm doing uh, I'm using a 3.25 crochet hook on these. And what I do is in between the cluster stitches, I'm not uh, an expert on crochet terms, but like, I don't even remember the name of this stitch in English. Uh, there are like three stitches here. And usually when you're doing a granny, you make like one loop in between those three. I personally don't. I just go like under here in the gap between under here and make the other three. So it's not like um, gaping a lot. It's not um, loose. The only place that I do uh, like this one loop stitch is in the corners and that's it. And then I use uh, the join as you go method from Attic24, I think. I'm going to look it up and put a link to it because it's really nice. It makes such uh, like a professional clean finish. And it's super easy and you just, you just join everything as you go. You don't have to do any sewing. Um, and then you just weave in your two ends and you're done. So this has no ends to weave in and neither do these. So I need to join these to the ever growing blanket. So yeah. Uh, um, what else do I have? I don't have any stash at the moment, but I did, um, I did try out a little bit of dyeing. I had some, uh, dye around the house, not acid dye. I, it's, it's basically used to dye clothes. I don't, it's from Dylon. I don't really have any info on it. I bought a ton of it a few years back and tried out dyeing some yarn with my friends and it worked out fine. So I had some dye left over and I skinned up three different gray uh, bases from, uh, I used Yaku by Camarose uh, and it's like my go-to superwash. I showed two skeins of it uh, in the last episode. It's my go-to superwash uh, for like solid main colors that I need because their palette is great and I absolutely love the yarn. Uh, so I took three different gray colors, light gray, medium gray and dark gray and I just played around. Uh, and this is how the light gray turned out. It has pinks and greens and browns and blues and yeah, red, all kinds of different speckly bits. And the medium gray I used three colors. I used coffee brown, I used uh, some red, and I used green. My camera is not so good. I'll also post a photo because I got a, a pretty decent photo of these yesterday. And the dark gray, I'm not sure if it's going to show up correct. It has these tiny hints of dark magenta and 
turquoise in it. Yeah, so these are 50 grams each. And I think I'm gonna use them all for like bits and pieces of knitting. I, I really love how this one turned out. I have a, I have a project in mind that I want to use it for and I have some yarn in my stash that goes perfectly with this. So that's exciting. Um, when my daughter saw these, she was like, oh, did you make them, mom? And I was like, yeah. And she was like, I want to try. She's been doing like tie dye at school. She did a t-shirt that's really nice. Um, and she wants to, to try out dyeing yarn. So what we're going to do is like not next weekend, but the weekend after probably. Uh, she always comes with me to knit group because she really loves it. Um, we are going to get some uh, regia in white. Just plain white regia. And I'm going to skein it up and wind it. Um, and she's going to dye yarn. And then I'm going to knit socks out of that yarn for her. So she's going to have uh, home hand dyed um, socks out of yarn that she dyed herself. So I think that's going to be like a, a sweet, nice project that we can do together. Dye the yarn and then I'm going to make her socks out of it. I think that's going to be really nice. I'm really looking forward to doing that with her. Uh, yeah, so I think that's it for this week. I don't have anything else written down. Um, oh, I had the first meeting. One more, yeah, one more thing I wanted to mention. I had the first meeting uh, organizing the the yarn crawl for Reykjavik on uh, Monday. And the yarn crawl is going to be Saturday, September 1st. So please come to Iceland and participate. <laughs> really, if you if you if you are planning a trip to Iceland, ever not just for the yarn crawl, but ever if you ever find yourself in Iceland and you wanna visit some knit stores or just hang out and knit, contact me. I love meeting new knitters and hanging out with them and knitting with them and having coffee. So, yeah, if you ever find yourself up here, just holla at me and I will do my best to meet you, meet up with you. And I mean, I have a full time job, but I'm usually off at like four or five. So I can definitely come and meet you and have coffee and show you around if you if you want to. So, OK, I think that's it for this week. It's a shorter episode than usually, but. Yeah, I just have secret knitting going on apart from what I just showed you. So I can't really talk about about it yet, but I will at some point when I get uh, the green light from Steven about that it's okay to show you what I've been doing. Uh, so I hope you have a great Sunday or Monday or whatever day you're watching this. Uh, and happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there and the mothers-to-be and grandmothers and everybody. So, happy Mother's Day. Uh, enjoy the rest of your weekend or your week. And I hope you have a good and productive knitting week ahead of you. Thank you. I'll see you next week. Bye.